Hello, I'm Mark Schmidt, the director of Cochise College Small Business Development Center. Um, I think the whole purpose and reason behind Shark Tank was to have more entrepreneurs get involved in starting and launching businesses. Everyone's familiar with the show, so they kind of knew the concept. Uh, you know, and it was uh, basically we teach at Cochise College business planning classes. In addition to the SBDC, we actually launch about 60 businesses a year. Uh, this is the first 2016 uh, class of the Shark Tank. This isn't going to be a one and done version, uh, but basically the reason that we're doing this is kind of a, uh, an interest or an outreach in reaching younger entrepreneurs too, which this has done. We originally had 20 people sign up for the program, but how it really started is Brenda called me up. She teaches, it's actually... Yep. Is this this 183? class, 183, yeah. um, I'm teaching it right now at the college Sorry. through ITV, okay. where people are coming in through uh, Douglas, Santa Cruz, Benson, Wilcox, and Sierra Vista. And it's basically, it's a Cochise College four-credit class. It's a business planning class. And Brenda's been teaching this on post. And uh, she, she contacted me and she said, Mark, what can we do to jazz this up a little bit? Uh, we need to re remarket it, and so my first thought was, I watched the Shark Tank show. My name is Jessica Peterson, and I'm a partner and speaker with Free to Be You Seminars. We signed up for Shark Tank because we have the idea, we have the the resources, and and the basic foundation of what we're doing. But that's all that we had, and we knew that in order to get from a great idea to a active business, we needed help with that path and, and Shark Tank was offering that help. Hi, my name is Cheryl Sutter and the name of my business is Free to Be You Seminars. Our target market is predominantly women between the ages of 15 and 90, really. We found that a lot of women that we know do not have uh, self-love feel like that that they need to be more and so we want to to help them learn that and we believe that and we've found that really people like that um, can be anywhere from 15 to, to 90 everybody it seems like every age group has people with that issue a lot of You want to estimate your income for each month and hopefully you're going to estimate that income um, consistently but with slow increases throughout because you want to definitely show a pattern there um, that you're going to start off you know at this level but hopefully that will stay consistent and you'll be adding each month a little bit more revenue um, obviously if you're adding more revenue you're got to spend money to make money, right? So you'll be adding um, expenses as you go along, okay? Um, investing activities. These are things like um, selling a car, okay? That you, a business, you have a car in your business and you want to buy a new one, um, maybe you're going to sell the old one for cash as opposed to trading it in, and you're going to get cash for it. Um, if you have a money market account, um, or um, you, let's, let's talk about, um, like a stock, you know, you, you invested in a stock. You can sell that and make money, bring cash into the business. Um, collecting principal on loans that you've made to other people, maybe. You have a good cash flow, so you're gonna loan out some of that money just to make a little bit of interest from somebody else that has a smaller business. 
Um, outflow is purchasing long-term productive assets. You're going to buy computers, desks, those kind of things. Um, again, I'm not going to get a whole lot into investments because I think this is kind of below you, but this is what investing activities basically um, get into. Um, financing activities, again, you have issuing your own equity securities. Maybe you're going to have somebody invest in your company, so they're going to give you money and you're going to be able to use it. That's money that you brought in. And you can use that in your operations, okay? Um, issuing bonds. Um, maybe you're going to, you know, say, okay, I want a, a bond or a note, you know, that says, okay, I need money. I'll give you a note and um, that kind of thing. Um, pay dividends. Um, again, these are things that are probably above you guys, but at least you know that you have inflows and outflows that do come into consideration with financing the business. Um, the indirect method for a cash flow statement. This is the one that you will see used most often. There is a direct method and an indirect method. I'm only going to go over the indirect method because this is what you see used. The FASB, which is the Financial Accounting Standards Board, requires companies to use the direct method, but you see this one used more often, um, especially in small businesses. You start with your net income. Um, you end up with cash flows from operating activities. Um, you add in losses or any gains, um, and that's if you're buying, selling equipment, those kind of things, or stocks. Um, you have at, you add in non-cash expenses, and these are the kind of things that he was talking about. Things like depreciation. Um, it is an expense on your book. It causes you to have less income to report for tax expenses, but it really does not affect your cash whatsoever. So the idea for the business came from um, life, basically. Both Cheryl and I have been down the road um, of poor self-image and self-esteem and, and not loving who we are. And, and we've also seen other people who have been in the same boat, who are at a place in their life right now where they're not happy with who they are. Um, and there's a need out there. I mean, 85% of Americans suffer from, from low self-esteem. So there is a need for people to learn to love themselves for who they are, where they are right now, and we want to fill that need. Cash flows. This, he was talking about cash flows, and he was showing you some numbers, and I'm not sure if you guys understood all that, because a lot of those numbers that he was pulling out were what we call non-cash expenses. Um, so that's why he was adding them back, because it wasn't really affecting your cash, okay? So how do you obtain your cash? What explains the change in your cash balance? Like, you know, from the beginning of the month, you started with $10,000 at the end of the month. You have $15,000 in your bank account. What happened to make that change? Okay, where's, where do you spend your cash? Where do you get it from? Um, importance of cash flows. How, does it, how do you fund your operations? Um, do you have enough money to pay your debts? Okay, um, did the business make any dividend payments um, or take any withdrawals? Okay, um, did you borrow any funds? Okay, so there are three sections to your cash flow statement. And this is in addition to your income statement, your statement of owner's equity, and your balance sheet. This is a fourth statement, okay? And this will show a bank if, especially if you're going to get a loan. Well, here's, here's my cash flow. Here's how I can pay it. Okay, pay a loan off. Okay, you have operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Okay, operating activities obviously are things like cash receipts from customers, dividends um, received. Um, and this, again, we're getting into bigger businesses because this comes into financial accounting as opposed to intro to accounting. So um, interest from borrowers, um, like if you made a loan to somebody and they're paying you interest. Um, other ways, outflows or salaries and wages, any kind of you know, vendor payments, taxes and fines, hopefully no fines. Um, interest paid to lenders, other things that might happen. We're gonna start out offering a one day seminar and a three day workshop to help people to learn to love themselves for who they are, where they are right now. Ultimately, we're gonna offer a book and uh, online courses, videos, those kind of things to help them remember and take home 
the information so that when they're um, when they're back home, they can can keep implementing it. Um, but this is um, it, your assets. You can see you have some uh, cash. You have accounts receivable. You have some office equipment. Um, you might have some investments. You may have a money market account. Um, you may be playing in stocks and bonds. Okay, those would be assets. So. There's a lot of different accounts that can go into your asset accounts. You got revenue. You may have, I mean, we have lots of different kinds of revenue, okay? You can have, re let's say your, your company um, sells underwater baskets that aren't gonna melt or whatever. Um, but you also have a Coke machine. So you might have a miscellaneous revenue account because you stock that Coke machine for 50 cents per Coke and you charge a dollar. So, another revenue account. It's not to do with your business per se, but it's another way of making money. Okay, so you may have multiple revenue accounts. Um, owner's equity, that's the money that you, or Mia, Mia is a lawyer in this case, by the way. Um, so she has capital that she has brought into the company, and she also, when she needs some money, she, this is a small business, she makes withdrawals. You don't see this in corporations, hopefully. <laughs> You see dividends and things like that. Some other things that can be money taken out. Um, but in a small business, you may need, and you're not actually putting yourself on as an employee, so you may take withdrawals um, to pay some of your bills and stuff. And that's just the way you take care of it. So we're hoping that the Small Business Development Center can help us with our marketing, um, help us get our name out there, and, and help free to be used seminars become um, a conversation piece. You have to have a place to keep all of these things separated, okay? You don't want to put your revenue in one account and your expenses in that same account and because you won't be able to figure it all out in the end, okay? You'll have revenues, you'll have expenses. You'll have a net, which is hopefully net income or a profit, okay? So this is the place where you track that. Um, Basically, you have the formal accounting of it. Um, you're gonna have a column for your date, um, the item, a posting reference, um, so that you can carry it over into your general ledger. Um, it's gonna have the format of a debit or a credit. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the debits and the credits are how you enter into uh, the, the numbers that you enter into these accounts, whether they be a debit or a credit. Um, you can see that basically this is kind of just a nice little way of keeping track of it there. And you can see the little letter sheet. Okay. Um, of course, this is manual. Okay. It's nice to learn it manually because if you know how to do it manually, then you know what you're doing on a computer system. Um, most people nowadays go straight to a computer system and sometimes that causes confusion because you don't exactly know what you're doing and you start putting things in the wrong places. Um, I've had several people come to me with um, you know, negative equity or um, you know, uh, negative revenue and it's, it's just the way you've entered them incorrectly, that kind of thing. We've learned all kinds of things. Things from the fact that we need insured to what what we need insurance for, what kind of licenses that we need, um, who we need to back us up on our team, such as a lawyer, an accountant, and, and so many more things. Uh, it's been really helpful. Um, T accounts, um, basically, you have you'll see that you'll have two T accounts whenever you do a transaction. So for instance, um, let's say you take in $100 from a client, okay, that's revenue. And you're gonna have a credit to your revenue account. What's gonna happen to that $100? You're gonna put it into your bank, okay? So you're gonna have a cash account. And so you're gonna debit your cash account for $100 and you're gonna credit your revenue account for $100. And there's your balancing transaction. So every debit has a credit. Every credit has a debit. Okay? okay we'll see how that works a little bit. Um, again, don't think of it as positive and negative. It doesn't necessarily always, in some ways it follows that format, but don't think of it that way. Um, you're just thinking of it 
kind of think of it in a balancing kind of structure, a left side and a right side, a debit and a credit, okay? If you think of it in positive and negative, you may get mixed up, yeah, yeah. Um, again, it, it indicates the position only, okay? Um, there are normal balances, like revenue accounts, hopefully, will have a credit balance, okay? Um, expense accounts will have a debit balance. Those are the kind, you want to see it like that. They have what we call normal balances. It used to be that SBA, the biggest reason people failed is they ran out of money. Either lack of sales, they mismanaged expenses, or they didn't have any, um, they didn't have any you know, outside funds to rely on in case they got, out, they got into trouble. Well, about 15 years ago, SBA figured out an equal reason for default on loans was basically poor management. And they equate poor management with lack of industry experience because a lot of times things happened on the front end early on that you didn't anticipate because of your lack of exposure to the industry. So that's where the key is. Let's just play devil's advocate. I'm part of the staff. I'm, Steven is part of the staff. He's really good. He's so sharp and you don't really know anything about it. Well, Steven's so sharp that Steven knows if you don't know that much about it, Stephen might be able to figure out a way to increase his cut without you knowing, okay? Because Stephen knows the inside of this like the back of his hand. If you don't, that's, that's what I'm saying. They're looking at it that if you don't have that industry background in your ownership group, then you might be susceptible to that happening. So you wouldn't find it out until, yeah, 12 months down the road, I found out Stephen was siphoning off part of the maintenance funds go into his private account. Okay, and, and like quickly going over these, is the intention of this whole thing too was to, uh, uh, this isn't all about money, uh, and, and a lot of the people that are involved in this don't even want sharp money. Right. Um, sometimes you maybe just want Mark Cuban, uh, or some of these experts just to sort of assist or advise you in right. your business, but anyway, some of the people that are on here that are shark, sharks, there could be a potential uh, where an investment might be made in their company, but it's not a commitment by the sharks. In, in no way are we guaranteeing anybody in this is going to get any kind of a, any type of a financial gift or uh, I want to say participation in their business or give up business ownership like the show. Um, I will put it this way. Lend, you know. All right, remember what we talked about, having the industry background, that you've got the business savvy to make this thing work. Well, if you started a business and you ran out of money, which is a common thing people do, okay, I, I'm going to try to do this without borrowing money and I'm going to bootstrap it and it sounds really good and that's great. But if you do that and you run out of money, that means chances are, from a cash flow standpoint, you're probably losing money at this point. Now I don't have any money to put in. So let me ask you, if I've been operating for five months and I'm losing money and I don't have any more money to put in, I want you to put money into my business, you're going to be like, well, you haven't made a dime and you're out of cash. Mm -hmm. If there's any bump in the road, my money's gone. No, I'll pass. Okay. So unfortunately, if that happens, you're better off maybe finding money something else to get because it's going to be tough otherwise okay. because it's looked at as okay that might be a management problem they didn't anticipate that okay so it, I, I understand it's good to bootstrap and do it all on but if you do that you need to have plenty of cash and before <laughs> you run out of that cash if you do decide to bootstrap okay you know if you've got forty thousand dollars in the bank and you've spent twenty Okay, go get, get the loan now, okay? Because if you wait until that, if you wait till you're down to five grand, you're not getting the loan. We do have some things that have been offered up, 
uh, for instance, Mary Tiemann is going to give uh, someone uh, a membership to the Chamber of Commerce. Mignon Hollis has office space she's going to dedicate for time. Uh, America Southwest Federal Credit Union is one of the banks that are involved in this. Um, he'll be on the panel. Uh, the bank can't guarantee loans for people, but obviously when they get through this course, if someone that we know about needs to go to the bank for a flat-out loan, they're going to be able to go to the bank with a business plan to be able to pitch that bank to see if their idea is bankable. And so Ron is, is uh, it kind of represents that community. He'll be on the panel. Um, as well as Ed Molina is a, a successful uh, business entrepreneur himself uh, that will be there to give business advice in his area of expertise is government contracting. Cash flow, okay? It's not, your net, it's not net income or net profit. But let's just say your business, say your net income was, say you lost $5,000. Okay, so you lost five grand, but you were writing off some equipment by depreciating it. I think Kathy was talking. I actually had a statement. Okay. Cash flows to show them, but so you, she, you, you, you were writing off some equipment. Depreciation is kind of a paper expense. It's a non-cash expense. So maybe you had ten grand in depreciation. Okay, and you had a small, you had a little bit of debt in the business and. You had ten, you know, ten thousand dollars in interest. There's also a, an expense item called amortization, which is kind of basically expensing out some of the intangible values of a business, like goodwill or customer lists or the name, trade name. You can you can amortize that. So maybe the depreciation is kind of writing off a tangible asset. Amortization is is kind of like depreciating or expensing out an intangible asset. That's an oversimplification of it, but again, I'm just a, I'm just a dumb lender. She's so. so you might have some amortization costs, let's say 2000 And you know, you can write the auto, you can run the auto through, everybody does it. You know, you gotta be able to justify it. You're supposed to be able to, but a lot of people do it, okay? So let's say you write the, the vehicle off, and that's five thousand dollars. And you paid yourself a salary of say twenty-four thousand dollars. So when we look at all this, okay, our total cash flow, we lost five, but this is an add back. So now we're up to a positive 5, 15, 17, 22. Our total cash flow in the business is 46. So then we're going to bring that up here. Okay? So our total cash flow is 46,000. Now we're going to look at it and say, okay, so what does Stephen need to live on? Now we're going to look at Stephen's personal expenses and personal sources of income. So let's say Stephen needs 45 grand a year to live on. But Stephen's married, and Stephen's spouse makes 36 grand. So if Stephen's spouse makes 36 grand, and they need 45 grand to live on, how much does Stephen have to take out of the business? Okay, so our total cash flow was that less owner's needs so our net cash flow is 37,000 so this might be an example of a business in which well, wait a minute I didn't pay any taxes how much taxes do you pay on a $5,000 loss zero okay but this is where I'm, this is, I tell this story because we're going to start our business because there's a need for it. Um, you look around and you see people who aren't happy with who they are or where they are, who think that they should be more, do more, 
that they should meet the world's expectations and requirements of them. If they could do something better, that they would all be different. Um, and the reality is, is that that's not true. And so we want to teach people that they're worthy of being loved for who they are, where they are, right now, simply because they exist. Okay. So it's okay to be a little greedy, or maybe just a little stupid. <laughs> but if you're greedy and stupid, then you've got some problems. Because if you tell the IRS, see what the biggest problem people make when they start a small business and they start to take advantage of it from a tax standpoint, is many times they have a spouse who's working, so we're in a position now where we can live off of just one income, so I'm going to start this business. And this income is pretty good. So this person makes, my spouse makes 100 grand, and we only need 70 grand a year to live on, so that's a pretty good deal. But then they start figuring out, well, you know what? If we bury more expenses over here, I can show a bigger loss, which offsets my spouse's income. When you start doing that, that's a formula for failure. Thank you.